Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode of And in this episode, I'm chatting with Tully. Yeah, chatting with Tully again. It, it was kind of a random episode. We jumped on, didn't really know what we wanted to talk about, and went off into a direction which was really cool where we talked about like if we could create a retreat that we would want to go on, what would that look like? And then it kind of went into the concept of like we go away on a retreat or some kind of life changing experience when you come back how do you communicate that with your tribe your community your family that doesn't create this like, massive overwhelm it was really really cool combo so I really enjoyed it what do you guys think cool so cool you know what I'm talking about no that's <laughs> saying goodbye Um, welcome back to another episode of I Would Like to Have a Conversation. And I'm back with Todd. And weirdly, we really don't have a lot to talk about today. Like, we both come on. I was just talking about before, like, it's daylight savings in Australia now. So it's 4 a.m. on the clock, but really it's 3 a.m. Yeah. And when I turned on the camera, I was like, oh, my gosh. And <laughs> we took a step back. It was a bit gnarly. Dallas Aiden sucks. I don't know what you think about it, but I think it's like the worst thing. Yeah, it's thing. terrible. It's, it, it just shouldn't exist, in my opinion. But I understand why they do it with the changes in the season and how, you know, it can impact some things. But I'm sure there's some scientific, you know, evidence to support that it's better, you know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. So we'd like, maybe. Yeah. Like, we... Like, because I go to bed early. I'm going to bed like 7, 7.30. It's like right as out there like it's still sun up until like nine o'clock it's gonna get worse so you, and the kids as well like we try to get the kids at the bed then as well and now they're they kind of waking up at like that three o'clock time we had risky kids last night for theo and there was chase tag which is like that chase tag you see on the internet so he's learning how to do that and, and i'll come upstairs at the end because the kids aren't let like parents aren't let in the room the coaches and the kids only. So I'll come upstairs and his eyes were just red eyes. This is only like seven o'clock. He did wake up really early this morning, yesterday morning day. <laughs> they sit around at the end. They ask questions about the mindsets and all that kind of stuff. Like what was the mindset today? And um, he asked the question, he put his hand up and the coach like, what is it Theo? And he just stared at him. Cause he was that tired. He goes, I don't know. And just put his head down. I so cooked. <laughs> and then he come over afterwards and his eyes, it was just like a, it's like a, like a doughy. It was the funniest thing. I was like, you are cooked. And then the coach came over and goes, yeah, he said he was really tired the whole time. So it was pretty funny. The, um, it's interesting to see that. I do, I do have something I want to ask you about that'll probably take us somewhere, but it's interesting yeah, to notice okay. that because, uh, last night, so. We, uh, it was Columbus day, I think yesterday. I don't, I don't know. Like <laughs> we still celebrate that for whatever reason. Um, and <laughs> so my son, Chase, my oldest one, um, stayed at his friend's house. And so they had, usually when they're there, they stay up late and get up early. And same thing last night, he would like, sometimes we have this thing before we go to bed. He wants me to like throw him on the bed and, you know, just play a little rough house. <laughs> yeah. So he was just complaining, dad, throw me on the bed. And I was like, no, because it was literally 10 minutes before they needed to go to bed. And, um, you know, I got called like the lazy father and stuff like this. It, it hurts a little bit, but, um, but I, I'm, I'm like literally the first one to run out the door if they want to go play soccer or something. So anyways, it didn't, mm. it didn't hurt for that long. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, my, but my. yeah, like <laughs> he was just so like, he, he couldn't reason with me, you know, and he just wanted it so bad, but he was so tired. There was just no reasoning with him, but. Um, I think it's really interesting to see, like, to see that in the kids and then also to be able to recognize it in yourself, you know, even as an adult, like when you're a little cranky or this or that, and then you look at, you start to look at your habits and behaviors and you're like, wait a minute, it's, it's, you know, half an hour later here and, you know, things like that. So, um, what I, cause I, I, what I wanted to, I'm going to shift gears really quick. Cause I think, uh, what I would <laughs> love for you to share, what would be your ideal um, and I, I don't know if this is like publicly known yet about the adventures you actually want to take people on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it known? Oh, it's, it's not really, but can we bring it up? Let's talk about it. 
Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So I know I shared with you that I've been on something that sounds similar, but what I, what I'm interested, we talk about our, our perfect average day all the time. What I would be interested mm-hmm. in is what would be like your perfect average, like, um, event, if you will, uh, with the, the, the people in your circle and these dads that you, you want to, you want to do. Cause I believe that's something you want to do, right? Yeah. Where it's kind of like takes one, it's got, it takes whoever, like who wants to go on the, the retreat or event away from the current suck. Like it's kind of like suck town. But there was a, I'm in Sucktown, it's population one. It's me. And it's got like, remember that, um, did you watch that Marvel show, Wanda Vision? I started to, I, I couldn't get through the first one. It was very, it was, it was very challenging. It made so much sense by the last episode. Okay. But anyway, like the whole like concept is like, spoiler alert, is like, she's just trapped all these people in this town and made it by like, using her powers to keep everyone there and everything like that. Kind of like that, like where people are just stuck in this, this suck where they can't get out of it. So a circuit breaker, like get out, go to this retreat and go to this thing. And my idea is like, because we go through the three story acts where it's like health, fitness and health, and then relationships and then prosperity. My big thing on when it will work is like the beginning of the day would be some, like every day would be physical challenges, like massive hiking. And by massive, I mean like just steep hills, all that kind of stuff. I don't mean like we're going to go hike for 10 hours, like just something really physical. It could be even like, like Spartans got these hurricane heats, which are just meant to break you mentally. So nothing, not like that, but something that's going to push you to the limit of what your capacity is. So... You can move the needle on where you think your fitness lies or what do you think you can do? And that's why I think we should use fitness and health for to train up to do events where you move the needle enough to come back to the real life and realize that everything's like much easier than what, it, what you thought it was or yeah. much simpler than what you thought it was. Like I used the Spartan ultras and stuff like that when I did them to be ready to be a dad. Which is really bizarre, but I wanted to do something that was so hard and so extreme. It was so far outside my realm that I was like, changing nappies is nowhere near as bad as like climbing up that hill for the sixth time in 40 degree heat. Like it's a bit of a mixed batch of things, but that's the way I kind of worked it. So the way I would think like the retreat would work is like something physical. And I would think like a movement thing where it's hiking, running, or riding trail riding it would always be mountainous i reckon and then some kind of physical like workout a challenge of some kind just to start cracking the shell of um, people's beliefs and then it's like get together for lunch and the whole the whole idea of like spending the first half of the day of like just output Activities, working hard, 10,000 steps or more, just really pushing hard and really minimal food, like just hidden protein and veggies and not much else. And then have lunch, reconvene. And then the afternoon, straight after lunch, would be the relationship piece, relationship with yourself, relationship with your partner, relationship with your kids, exactly the relationship with your tribe, which mainly would be relationship with yourself stuff. So sitting down and just unpacking things what are your goals where you want to go what are the summoning blocks getting you there let's start smashing those belief systems that are holding you back i think bring it off the back of that physical morning there i mean the shell's kind of cracked it means we'll be able to get in deeper because you're more vulnerable because you got you don't have as much energy to try and block which is the bound nature stuff yeah, it's much easier to try and block away those thoughts coming up. They'll just come up. So, but you also have those feel good endorphins from everything you just did. So it's going to be like a bit of a mixing match. He's like, you probably just want to do that kind of stuff and sit around and chat. Be like, like kind of like a campfire chat where everyone's just sitting around talking about stuff. And there was a concept from, they don't exist anymore, but it was a really cool company 
called Habitry. Yeah. And they did Habitry summits where you get together and everyone sat around in a circle and they wrote post-it notes on a post-it note, like something they're struggling with or something they want to talk about. And then they just stuck up on the whiteboard and started talking about them. It was such a really cool concept. So little breakout areas where it's kind of like, what is the thing? What are your goals? What are you working towards? What is your biggest struggles? Let's start unpacking them. And then people, it's like a group think. Everyone sort of throws in ideas and what to do. And then it's just like for the rest of that day, after the, that part, it's kind of like be with yourself, hang out with each other, drink whatever they want to do. Just be like, just sort of relax, but rest and digest. You've just done a whole lot of physical activity. You've just done some deep work. Now let your brain just muddle through it, journal on stuff, let it unpack things naturally and just relax and recharge to go again the next day. What? And I like that idea of like, and it's also kind of like the hero's journey kind of thing where they go on the journey. The call to adventure is going to the retreat. And then while they're there, that's the adventure. There's like the trials, the trials and meeting the mentor and fighting your allies. All that stuff is happening in the morning half of the day. And then the challenge is like from that lunch onwards, the ordeal where you're fighting the, the demon, which we, we call the shadow, which we've talked about before. Not fighting it, so to speak, but that's the challenge is like, you, well, most likely like you're fighting yourself. Like this, the shadow self is stopping you from doing stuff. So let's meet head on. And the idea of the hero's journey is like, you're going into the cave. You've got the courage to go face that shadow. And then ideally come away from the weekend, doing that a few times, like three days in a row, I reckon would be cool. It'd be pretty good. It will flow kind of nicely. Like it's not, it's loose because it's meant to be loose because you don't know what kind of people are going to rock up and what kind of baggage they're going to bring right. with them. So it will open up different avenues as things come up. But the frameworks and stuff we've got for the mastery program which I've just learned from BG and Jay Tedder and all those guys will be the frameworks we can teach in those moments as well. Like the original idea was we were going to do a virtual retreat after the summit and spend the first day was going to be four hours and we go through the mastery framework at the start. Like where is you want to go? We capture reallocate resources a perfect average day, build that out. And then that's all done the day, day one. And right at the end of that is like the first touch on the shadow stuff. Like, hey, now you're looking at all this, what stories are coming up? And then for the next nine weeks, we use all those tools to help rewrite those stories. And I would love it if it would be like the retreat starts that. We go to a retreat and those first three days is like where we do all that goal setting and really awesome shit there. And then the last little bit is like the shadow work, like, okay, well, why aren't you going to make it? And we just do that while we're there because it's hard work, that stuff. And it's like, cool. And then for the next eight, nine weeks, we're going to rewrite that story. I love it. And just do that over and over again. Like I would love to do that like every quarter. That'd be my, that'd be so much fun. Let's make it happen. It sounds weird being fun. Yeah, I know. But even just saying it now, I'm like, this would be fucking so cool. Like you just, every quarter we just. Well, come over to the, I mean, come over to the States. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can, I can probably get, let's see, one, two, three, about up to seven, eight people in, the, in this place in New Hampshire. And, and then what we can do on that same day is actually go, um, I got one already planned up, Chris. Um, we can actually go yeah. do the, it's called the presidential traverse. So in the mountains in New Hampshire, they're all named after presidents. Washington mountain is what, the biggest one out here. Um, mm -hmm. and Jefferson, all that. So it's a pretty like, uh, demanding hike that you have to start like super early in the morning and then you can go, you start up and you basically do the, you know, the, the most of your elevation in the beginning and then at the end, because you're kind of going yeah. down into be in between peaks. So it's something very popular up here. I just throwing that out there. Um, that's a cool idea. Well, I like it. The, the question I have, um, because I've, mm. I've experienced something similar. I told you I went to like Colorado. We did, we actually did mm. this. We, 
we went and hiked the 14,000 footer and coming back, same thing, a little bit of time and then get into some deeper work. One of the, one of the things that I found, um, difficult is like, I go to these things and as a personal, you know, somebody like, I, I love it. I eat it up. I'm very open. I'm very vulnerable. When you, when you come, what, what are your tools, tricks, uh, integration for those people that are going to come back to a, a family, a, a partnership, um, people in their lives that may not, you know, just like, there's so much that happens in these weekends and they're, they're phenomenal weekends. W what are your tips, trick, you know, tricks or, 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 uh, like I said, your, your integration techniques to help these people transition back into their world without, um, and this is from personal experience without like just fluffing, you know, just stirring up feathers without just, you know, if I was <laughs> yeah. like a, what is it like a wolf in a chicken house or something like that? Like, you know, like, you know, how do you like integrating it? So, so that way so they can not only take action and, and you know, through a, a speedier process to get those results, but also at the same time, there's, a, you got these family dynamics, your relationship dynamics. And I just found that to be like difficult because I'm like, ah, I just want you to go and experience what I experience and feel like what, like how quickly we can move in this life that we can create. Like, does that question make sense? And, and what, what do you recommend yeah. for those things? It's, um, it's a tough one. Cause it's kind of like, like this could, for our six listeners, this could spark controversy, but it's kind of like when you, I think everyone would know someone who was born again, something born again, Christian or born again, whatever. And when they come, you catch up, you haven't seen them for a bit and you catch up with them and it's just like a a tidal wave of like this whole new person, which is kind of overwhelming. And you're like, I don't even, I don't know this person anymore. And you get in this way that fear comes in where the, so when we say like, for example, when we would come back from a retreat and if we unload a lot really, really quickly, there'll be a fear mechanism because of like, why oh, you joined a cult is what's going on here. Like how different is this person? What are they doing? Um, so they, the reactions would be protective because they're just protecting themselves. But it's really, really hard because you can go do a lot of work and unpack a whole lot and you want to share it. I reckon the, the biggest thing, and this is really cool because like the way I would almost work it is like, there's a concept by Nick Peterson called Allegiance Capital of like where it's a marketing concept for everybody. You can go... Google Nick Peace and Leisure Capital. He's got tons of vlogs about it. The idea is like to build trust in marketing so people know what are they here for? Why are you here? These are the next steps. This is what's going to happen when you take that next step. I reckon it would be a concept. We did these retreats kind of thing, like the same thing where it's like, cool, you're in, awesome. This is going to be great. Now we've got to build some of Leisure's Capital with your partner. Before we go, you need to let them know that this is what you just did. This is why you're doing it. This is what's probably going to happen. So they're completely prepared for when you come back. That you, and if you sort of plant those seeds, like, I want to talk about this shit. And then the whole, this is cool, there's so many ideas. Like, this is like Six Thinking Hats book, which I think is like a stealthy relationship book as well. I'll go down there somewhere. But you can tell them to, like when you're talking about stuff and it's like, you want to share passionately what you've just gone through, and this huge transformation, you can always ask them to wear a certain hat. It's meant to be around team management and team meetings. There's like a black hat, there's a pink hat, there's a white hat, like white hat and facts. Black hat is like, just challenges the, the opposite argument every time. There's all these different ones. So you can ask them to just like wear a certain hat. Like when I, when I come back, I'm going to be so excited. I just want, could you, could you do me a favor and just be this, wear this hat when I come back and just dump on you because I need to dump on somebody. Um, all these feel good vibes that I've got. And then, yeah, it's super tricky. I'm laughing saying tricky because there's like a thing here 
in Australia where everyone, where it's something like a challenging conversation, like, yeah, it's tricky. And then they just be on to something else, but I don't actually answer anything. <laughs> it's, it's so common now, they're like, yeah, the doctors and stuff with CEO stuff, they're like, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? And they just move on. I'm like, well, you didn't give me an answer. Yeah. That's, that's not helping. Yeah. So I think it's definitely like, as it, it will always depend on what the relationships are and everything like that, but planting the seed of what you're doing and why you're doing it so they understand. And knowing that, like, the stuff I went, learned with King's Crew, I started buying the Daddy Jean, things like that. And cats look at me like, what's going on? I didn't really um, tell her the things that I was doing. And I read some of the passages to her and stuff. And I was like, it's just, I'm using this to reframe stuff that happens in my life. Yeah. Make me feel good. And that's probably the, <laughs> we should call it the retreats, feel good again. Like that's the biggest thing I keep saying is like when you're doing this stuff, you share that it's just to help you feel good. Like I don't want you to change. Like it'd be cool if you learn some of this stuff so you know what I'm talking about. But we can't force it on them. That's the hardest part. And the only thing we can do is like like in that relationship story I that I talk about in Space Builders a lot is Working on yourself is the first step anyway. And then something I got taught when I was going through the depression and coming off alcohol and stuff like that, it was really cool. And such a, like, I think a lot of people know it anyway. Relationships aren't solid if one leans on the other. So oh, relationships work really well. This is what the psychologist told me. I think it was a psychologist. It was like, cause at the time I was coming off alcohol and it was a very volatile relationship because of me coming off alcohol and we were fighting a lot. It's cause I didn't know who I was. And he goes, yeah, you're leaning on her. She goes, you're fucked pretty much. And he goes, you, your relationship will only last if you stand up by yourself. So at that time, when I did start figuring out how to create my own pillar and be the person I wanted to be, we actually broke up. Because she started leading on me and it just didn't work. And, and there was lots of baggage of what I was like when I was an alcoholic. So I was a completely different person. So she met me when I was an alcoholic. So she only knew that side of me. So it, it's, it's tricky. After <laughs> <laughs> all, like coming back. And this is where I think it's like when you're at those things, it's like, and you want to do these internal, external transformations, all those kinds of things. Who are you doing it for? Like, are you doing it to impress someone when you come back and you want to, which I've done before. I'll come back and just like, hey, this is the sick thing I've done. Right. She can't, she's like, cool. This just does not tickle her fancy at all. Like, those 50K Spartan Ultras are out there for 10 hours just doing going up and down mountains and getting dirty. And that's like super meditative for me. Like that, I would do that every weekend without fail. Like, this is why I like the idea of the retreats. Like, it fucking lights me up. Like I could do that all the time. If I could get paid to do that shit, that would be amazing. Cause it just makes me feel good. I have so much clarity doing that stuff. But for Kat, it is like the, her worst nightmare. So that was, it seems like the fucking most annoying thing I could ever do. So it's like two different things. But she loves art, but she would lean into the art side of stuff and could sit and just draw for ages. So yeah, it's very, it's such a good question because it causes friction. Like you go away and you have this awesome thing, awesome, awesome experience. And you come back and you want to share it. And the, no, this is what it is. Expectation. When we come back and share, we're probably expecting a better response than what we get. But it's probably, because I very much always go, what, what are we doing to change how we feel about a thing so we feel good about it? But letting go of the expectation that anyone else is going to give a shit about this awesome thing we do, which is really hard. It's really hard. Because um, we want them to feel the way we do. And 
Huh. It's funny because we were just talking about that R3 book. And in there, another concept, the stealth influence, where what is the belief system someone has? What belief system do they need to adopt to learn that your thing makes sense for them? Where it becomes their own idea, which is kind of what we would need to do. It's kind of like sneaky persuasion, but it's not sneaky in a sketchy way. It's like, like, could you imagine if he came back and instead of like completely like bleh, verbal diarrhea, how awesome this thing was? Well, we just net cats now. Like, oh, cats been home with the kids, trying to keep them busy and not stab each other with knives from the drawer. And I'll come back and I'm like, I just went up and down mountains all day and had really awesome food. And we sat around a campfire and talked about really cool shit. <laughs> she was just like, go away. Kids, give me one of those knives. <laughs> Yeah. But imagine if you come back in your age, she's like, so, so how was the weekend? It was pretty good. It's just leave it at that. Yeah. Like, what'd you learn? Oh, learned some of my shadow stuff that's been holding me back that I've been trying to unpack, which has been really cool. Like, it's sort of like a different tone where they, they come in to ask more questions yeah. about it. I was going to say, yeah. Like, I like that term come in because it, like, you're in. And, and it doesn't have to be an intentional uh, inviting them in. Um, cause I think it goes back to that question that you had asked, like, who is this for? And ultimately yeah. you know, my answer would be it's, it, it is for me, but it's so I can sh continue to show up in the way that I want to show up in this world for my kid and, you know, and for the people in my life. And so I like that. That's, that's really interesting. Like you're not intentionally going, hiding things from them or pulling back to, to no. spark the curiosity, but th this is, it was yours and, and, th and this experience was yours and yours only. And if they wanted to come and they were really that interested, they'll ask enough questions. And then maybe next time, like they, they join you on a, on a couple's retreat or something like that. But that's, I, I like that. That's really cool. Cause I tend to be the opposite. I tend to be like, you yeah. need to like, really this not. was so great. Like, <laughs> you let, you know, like, and I realized like it, yeah, it, it served, it, it didn't serve anything really other than, you know, cause I, I, I shared from a place of authenticity though. Like I loved this, like this was great. I was able to tap into these things, but I, I really enjoy that. I appreciate you sharing that. That's cool. It's kind of, but the whole show don't tell thing, the. There's so much information. If we tell, they're not going to, a lot of people won't take it in anyway. But if we show, if we went away on these retreats and come back and there's a chain through actions, which is like the real learning process is like learning is just absorbing information. It's a change of behavior. That is the actual concept of learning. And if you come back and there's a changed behavior for the better, obviously. Depending on what cult you come from, the, <laughs> the, like it will, that will create interest. And it's like, oh, that's a change here. And then, no, hi, oh, yeah, there could have been this. That's kind of powerful. And that builds that thing of like, where it starts playing the seed, which is the whole concept. Kind of the concept of persuasion is where you're planting the seed for them to adopt the idea that they want to do this thing, which is really, it's difficult, which is like marketing kind of what I want. Like if you can nail that, <laughs> you're awesome. It's like, as long as you do it for like legit cool things, not nefarious, dodgy stuff. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, once you can get. Oh, once they decide it's their, it's their city, that's what we want to do. Like you're showing a different thing. Like Nick Peterson, again, I lean on him a lot because his marketing systems are so cool, which he learned from Chris Boss okay. in negotiations and stuff. And it's think of it like a black swan event. So we've gone away on this retreat and we think it's amazing. So this is the way it could work. But let's prove that your partner just thinks there's only white swans. There's only what? White swans. There's only white swan. There's no other colored swan. There's just white. And they're like, they will fight that argument to the death. Like, there's only white swans. You're like, oh yeah, that's cool. But have you heard about 
this person over here, which is where other stories come in. This is the marketing concept. Have you heard about Todd over here? Todd's got a pet bat black swan. And it just cracks the sh cracks that shell, the beliefs shell, just a little bit. And then open up a void for just enough information to start coming in and they go like, whoa, and the world changes and they go, I need to go learn something. And then that's them wanting to learn. So it'd be like, if, which is a cool, cool thing. Like makes me think about like doing this retreat. Like it's not just for, for these dudes or whoever to go away. Like if you create stuff around, okay, when you go back, this is probably what's going to happen. Imagine how much trust that would build. Like you're going to go home, you're going to feel awesome, but you're going back to the life that you've already built for the last 10, 20 years. So things are going to be the same for when you left before, but you've got new tools that you can use. So do know this, that going back, if you go back and completely drop a bomb on everything and try and throw the baby out of the bathwater, you're going to have massive resistance. So you... Here's a concept we can use. Let's go back and do this. It could work so well. Like, let's go back and do this. When you go back, crack the shell. Little ideas, little changes, little tweaks. Do things that make you feel good. And start aligning this, your daily actions to what makes you feel good every day in the current life you've got. I think that's a really big one. Like, my thing was always like dropping a bomb, resetting and moving to a different day. Like, for me in this town, I can literally walk down the street and see a bush where I passed out drunk and someone pulled me out. All these different places where I've all these stories like leaning against the pole outside the pub waiting to get in. I couldn't even stand up. I stayed there for six hours trying to get in. They kept refusing me. I just went back to the pole and stood there. It's just, like, <laughs> just stuff like that. And I see it, you know, memories will come back and I'm like, hiya. Ooh. <laughs> I wanted to leave the area so bad. I've been wanting to get away for ages. And it's only like since like changing the story to feel good about everything that's happened and feel good now, but I don't really care where I live anymore because you can change the perception of where, how you feel about everywhere. I hope maybe in the middle of Australia and desert, probably not, but the, <laughs> you generally could feel good about most situations. You try hard enough. And then it's just a choice. Like, do you want to stay in that situation or not? Which is just a little bit, that's a different concept. But the, yeah, that'd be pretty, that was such a good question because it, it would stop people going too. Like, you're like, I don't want to go on another, have this awesome experience and then come back to the, the suck again, which is a story. Right. You could go, like, I use holidays. I've started doing this the last three, four years. I use holidays to reset into the perfect average day that I want to have. Okay. To get the steps and everything, like full movement. I've always got that the AM, the PM. AM, tons of movement, workout, beach with the kids, bike riding, heaps of shit before lunchtime. And the afternoons is like reading and eating. <laughs> it's pretty much it. That's like, I love holidays just because I can fall back in that pattern. And then I'll try and bring that back to normal life afterwards and how far can I go with that? I know people's work stuff doesn't really make that possible sometimes, but that's what I try and use holidays for. Like, what do you want your days to look like? Use that in the holidays to feel what it's like and then carry it back as much as you can. So it could be the kind of the same kind of concept. No, I love it. And the, even, even if awesome people question. do come back to a life where there's work and stuff like that, um, I think what's important is, is, is to take a look at where you can fit that stuff in then, right? You know, because mm. if you're, if you're like, man, I really felt great getting this movement in the morning. Hey, guess what? Going to bed at, you know, eight, nine o'clock to get up at five thirty six to get that movement in is, is critical. You know, it's, cr you can see how important it is to your happiness. What, you know, let's build that in. And, um, you know, cause that's the biggest thing I found too, is like, oh man, I came back to this. And, you know, I've got all these things I want, I want to meditate for an hour. I want to do all this. And, and <laughs> yeah. now, um, after taking a break from like trying to cram all that in my life, I'm slowly like, like seeing where it met, you know, wh where it lines up with the things. Cause what I've had, what I had to do or what I wanted to do was build the clinic 
And once I got that to a certain yeah. point, and I'm, it's getting there. Um, but now I, I'm starting to see like where I can fit these other pieces in and why they're going to be really, really important for, you know, me continuing to get to that next level and next level. So that's awesome. I, I like that idea of, of using the holidays for that. That's cool. I wish I would have like known that with, uh, oh man, I wish I would have, uh, cause there's a, I think I would have approached a lot of my coaching when it comes to holidays and things like that differently. Um, not that it was like far off, but, um, uh, that's a really cool concept. I appreciate you sharing that. It's kind of, it's hard yeah. though, cause I've tried, like I've given it to people, like here's a holiday protocol, just do this. You will love it. You still get to chill and eat and drink and all that shit at the second half of the day. And with families, you still, most of the time, it's always doing tons of stuff in the morning anyway. And I was like, this will allow you to relax and have fun. Like usually it's fasting, but low fast, tons of movement, like shit loads, as much as you can get. And then rest and digest the second half. The, um, and most dads who cracked on, even the mums who did it would come back lean up or the same and they would say like i ate everything i'm like yeah it works really well because you're doing so much movement and you're just really fueling and recharging and you tend to not go too crazy because you know you got to get up and do tons of movement right. morning. and it gives the nice balance but i too i also totally get that people want to go away on holidays and do nothing because they feel like they do so much right when they're at home which they do but it's more mental load at home like the mental load is a lot just juggling kids taxiing everywhere the mental load of everything of having a family really which builds up a ton so you need to dump somewhere and they think like doing absolutely nothing or empty the stress cup and allow them to come back fully recharged. Well, of course it's the same, but I would challenge that a fair bit because it doesn't actually enter the stress cup. It just keeps it there. Agreed. And you come back with the same amount of gunk in your cup that you got to all of a sudden try and figure out how to get rid of. I love it. Well, so it's kind of, yeah. So my, did you see? my next question is a lot more specific. <laughs> what is all the way down to I, I, even if it's one or three different places that you want to you want to go to first oh so the traits there's one like just there's one near here bright and hotham which is our snowfield like i say like our snowfields because most of our snowfields are fake as anyway but it's just so many trails like literally from a cabin I could lease because Cat's friends own it. And it's got something like 16 beds there. But it, like, literally from the cabin, you go out the door and it's like, psh, it's a straight hill down and you can go up the other side and you can go, you can walk from this snowfield across the top of the mountain to the other snowfield and back. There's like so many different trails you could do. But that one is amazing because it's local. Like, Hawaii would be another one. Everyone wants to go to Hawaii, but I think of like, the way I would tie it in with Hawaii is there's a, the Spartan trifecta in Hawaii, which is done at the um, place they shot Jurassic Park. Okay. So it's like the visual idea of that, which is I don't know anyone. It's very rare I talk to someone that says they hate Jurassic Park. Right. So the, that would be really cool. And then obviously like Canada and the States, like Northern Canada and the States, like around your area and... Not Northern Canada, Northern States. Northern Canada would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a little much out there. <laughs> although, yeah. if you, uh, although if you read Comfort Crisis, there, you, can, you can, have you read that book yet? I started it. I didn't get finished it. It's, I've got, it's one of those four or five books. I'm yeah, reading they do. Uh, I think it's technically in Alaska, but they do a, uh, yeah. a caribou. Like there's a caribou migration that happens like once a year. And so they go out and for like a whole month, they get dropped off by a supply chain, like a supply plane. And it, That'd be sick. And they're just left out there. And yeah. anyways, I don't want to ruin the rest of it, but. Um, That'd be cool. I would love that. Yeah. There's plenty of places, What's... honestly, like you, we could do the, the, the Rockies, anywhere in the Rockies. 
there's tons of trails all over the place, even in the Northeast. So you let me know. We can we can set that up. We got to we're gonna set it up. We'll get Rick involved too. The three of us get one organized. Yeah, that'd be sick. Like have one in Australia, have one over in the states. At least we have that every six months. It would be a good start. It'd be pretty cool. I mean, just a cool experience. I love it. Adventure. Adventure. Leading in the thing. And then, good enough from them. To be, because I was like, I was invited over for a talk in Austin, Texas for a summit. And this is, this is make you laugh. I was like, yeah, cool. It was in November. I'm like, sick. I'm coming. What are, like, combination was taken care of. I just got to fly there. I'm like, yeah, no worries. Looked at the flights. It's like four or five grand to fly from Australia to get there. And the four, like there's probably other ones I could find, but the four grand was like a 28 hour flight. It was like so many stops or something. I was like, oh, I'm not coming. <laughs> I've got it. Planned it out way ahead of time. It was just too close. Right. But flying out of Australia is just a nightmare, really. It's always long, which is, that's fine. We don't have a lot of, no, I reckon there'd be a way to do it, but yeah, it'd be, um, what I want to plan in for sure. It'd be pretty cool. And all that, like, I like the idea of sitting down and talking with everyone, not standing up on the stage and talking at people. It's like unpacking shit together. That's the kind of shit I want to do, which is why, like, we're bringing up the, um, we're going to start like a Be The Man weekly Zoom where it's invite only. You come on, we teach some of these concepts and then Q&A at the end and do it as invite only. I just, just think it's super needed for a lot of dads and people I know that are just struggling a lot, juggling a lot of shit. And then ideally we want to build a credit a ladies' version of that too. Probably not be the woman. Could be be the woman. I don't know. But have someone else facilitate that one, right. understandably. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Beautiful man. That was awesome. I think I appreciate you sharing good for a rando. Well, you, we usually just need one question that gets everything rolling. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually lit me up a bit because it makes me just want to get a summer cranking. At least a version. Like the first version of it. Build for Adventure was the first step. So Build for Adventure is up and running now. We've got over 10 dads in there now. Oh, nice. And I want to keep building that up, which is cool, and build that community. And then that was the next step from that. It's like, cool, let's go. Let's have a retreat. Well, if you have one in Australia, I would, I would ask that you give me like plenty of time to prepare for it as well, see if I can get out there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I would definitely come. I wouldn't... There's like, so the one where I'm thinking about doing it, they kind of like how, I think Killington is like the, the Spartan destination place in America where everyone says that is the best one to go to. Right in Australia is just near us. It's the one that's near the snowfields. They do a trifecta weekend there. And there's literally the destination place for Spartan in Australia. It's so pretty. You're climbing up this steep ass mountain, not as steep as Killington, but steep ass mountain. You turn around, it's just a huge view of the Pine Valleys. It's pretty awesome. So that's actually in February next year. So we could do the summit that weekend. That's that's kind of close. Let me let me go. Check. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> let, me, let me let me check flights and all that. Um, but I will tell you that um, I'm not far from Killington. By the way, I'm only a couple hour drive. So. Yeah, right. Have you gone up it? Uh, no. Um, I haven't done any of the races or anything like that. Um, and I don't think I haven't skied there yet either. So, um, like 10,000 foot or something. It's something crazy. It's, Cause they are, is it right? Some, it, it's huge. I can't remember. There's a guy that used to. Cause I didn't think we had huge. much higher than like 5,000 around here. I think it's like you do, cause you go up and down the hill twice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because Bright is 700 to 800 meters at like 20 something percent incline. 
and we go up and down it four times. Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna want to go. Yeah, because Killington, Killington is only eight, eighteen hundred forty-one feet. I was way off. <laughs> so you, yeah, you're probably doing it multiple times, clouds. but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have a friend, a friend of mine who who does all the beasts and stuff, and yeah, he he loves it. But yeah, you probably go up and down a couple times. So, I mean, what I hear it on the podcast with Spartan all the time. Yeah, they talk about Killington as a destination one. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. Everyone Trust me, like, Vermont is absolutely like gorgeous. So, um, yeah, it's it's awesome. So, um. Very cool, man. So if anybody is, please like leave, uh, let us know if you're down for an adventure, we would love to, um, do you have a, do you have a, like somewhere where someone can go to put their email so they can get on the list so they can just be updated about this stuff? No, nah, I'm going to create one. I'm actually just figuring out now, like looking at the website on Substack okay. and whether I need to build a different thing to start capturing emails and things. Still working having some a, things out. Multiple. Yeah, clean, cleaning it all up now to build for adventures up and running and beautiful, getting everything in alignment. So yeah, come basically come and comment on this post yeah. on Substack. Like I'm pointing down because the video is playing and it's down there. <laughs> <laughs> Before, comment on the post and let us know. And then yeah, I reckon whole will start creating a list to start getting stuff cranking. But yeah, if you're interested in build for adventure, it's a group for dads or looking to get built for adventure, enjoying their training, getting inside and having the capacity to do shit for a very, very long time as your kids age. So you don't feel like you're missing out on stuff. That's the main. So if you want to check that out, check that out. Todd, you got anything going on at the moment? No, uh, no, no, nothing, nothing too crazy right now. Um, just honestly Consults. focused on the clinic. Um, we're seeing like really cool uh growth um you know but the bottom line is as long as i'm helping people and you know i, I just it's starting to really pick up after like working re revamping like my systems and stuff and this month has been we're just we're crushing it more people are learning about us more people are um they they want some permanent pain relief and i'm just really excited about that so you know this goes back to anybody who's interested in in breaking through work reach out to chris um after almost three years of uh, struggling online uh, to, to say the least um i didn't realize until like him and i started working together on, like on a personal level that i was really chasing the wrong thing and through our work together the questions that he asked the space that he holds um i i was able to figure out like really what i want to do right now is i want to grow my clinic to its heights and it wouldn't have happened if like you didn't create that space for me and and challenge me or whatever it was that triggered it but it, it happened during our time together um i can't put like a pinpoint moment on it but i think it was just a lot of talk about the average perfect day and when i really mm. sat down to 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 understand what that is for me it was coming to the clinic and making the money that i want to make and the hours that i want to work um yeah and and even putting in hours outside of work to grow my clinic i don't feel that resistance um and i did online and it's not that i didn't want to help people online um i just my heart was in this and so if you i know you got to go but if you like if you I just feel it. like you need to break through something please reach out to chris um he did it, it's just phenomenal i appreciate you so that's all yeah. i have thanks dude yeah i love you too man i love you man the, um that was awesome thank you thanks everyone for listening i'm gonna fly for another call this is awesome. Yeah. This is very, wow. This is very, but this one's reckon. That's cool. Cool. Rock on, man. I do. All right, we'll see. See you later. Bye, guys.